Hi there, my name is Joseph Cavalli Price and I'm a first year MA student at the Royal Academy of Music on the Piano Accompaniment course. This is my proposal for the Jacob Barnes Prize entitled Music in Hospices. Before I start, I thought it would be helpful to give a bit of background to this proposal. My mother was diagnosed with a brain tumour in 2010. A few years later, after countless operations and radiotherapy, her diagnosis became terminal. In November 2019, she was admitted for end-of-life care at T. Alwyn Hospice, Swansea. I sat by her bedside for the last month and a half of her life, and through this, in a heartbreaking situation, I experienced firsthand the incredible people and care hospices provide. From the canteen staff to the cafe staff, cleaners, doctors and nurses. Towards the end, I felt increasingly helpless and with my mum being non-verbal, felt unable to effectively communicate with her. This is where I turned to music. The gift my mum had inspired and encouraged in me was something I was now using to communicate with and express my feelings to her at the end of her life. Whilst this was a deeply personal tribute to her and one of our final special moments together, it had a wider impact. Hospice staff, other patients and patients' families expressed how much they enjoyed hearing live music on the ward, how it gave them special moments with their families, how it relieved stress and improved the general mood on the ward, and how much they would love to hear more music at the hospice in future. So, why is there a need for this project? Well, music in hospices and palliative care settings are often overlooked because of the connotations of a hospice. Many people have never experienced life in a hospice, feel uncomfortable working with palliative care patients, or aren't sure how to approach making music in this environment. This project is an opportunity to change that, to demystify hospices for many people and make music in palliative care settings the norm. Music in hospices has been the subject of many studies. In one case, commissioned by the American Journal of Hospital and Palliative Medicine, researchers found that people who listened to music reported less pain, anxiety, nausea, shortness of breath and feelings of depression, as well as an increase in feelings of well-being after listening to music. All these differences were statistically significant, which means that they were likely due to the music and not just because of chance. There is clear evidence that music in hospices isn't simply a token gesture, but one that can have a profound effect on patients' mental and physical well-being. Finally, although I personally have undertaken outreach work with organisations and charities encouraging accessible music making, for whatever reason, hospices are not usually included in their regular programming, and personally, I have never received any dedicated training on bringing music into hospices. This project can help change that. It can help train academy musicians to feel comfortable and at ease with performing in palliative care settings. It can equip them with tools that enhance their work in other outreach settings and also their work with the Open Academy. So what do I hope to achieve? Well, Music in Hospices aims to bring the joy of live music to hospice and palliative care settings, allowing families to make lifelong memories through music. My most fervent wish is to demystify hospices and normalise musical activities in palliative care settings to the stage where music performances in hospices are considered normal. I want to change people's mentality from hospices being a place of death to a place where people are able to live out the remainder of their lives comfortably and with dignity, whilst providing patients, staff and families meaningful, special and valuable final moments together through music. So what do I want the project participants to experience? Well, I want patients and their families to experience the joy of live music in a setting they wouldn't ordinarily expect to hear it. I want music in hospices to provide them with special moments and memories towards the end of their family member's life, which they can reflect on and remember even, if, even after that person has died. Maybe a person has a favourite piece of music they'd like to hear. Maybe they were musicians themselves or just love a particular genre. Maybe someone would like background music to relax and sleep to. Or maybe the hospice would like a short concert for an entire ward of patients. Concerts such as these with appropriate music could be the perfect opportunity to bring families closer together and alleviate the emotional stress, pain and trauma this time can bring. So what might I learn? 
Well, I hope to develop my confidence in facilitating concerts in hospice and palliative care environments and, through practical experiences, develop a catalogue of appropriate music which people enjoy listening to. I will learn and understand cues of when someone is perhaps not wanting at a performance or live music and to learn and adapt to challenging and fast-changing situations in these settings. For example, someone could become unwell or become emotional and would like a pause from the music. These experiences won't just teach me how to be a better facilitator, but they'll teach me how to be a better musician and also a better person. So now a description of the project. What will happen during these concerts? Well, I would call ahead and speak to the ward sister to organise an appropriate date and time. I would consult on patients if there's anything I need to be aware of, any musicians on the ward, people with an interest in music, and ask her whether she could collate maybe some favourite pieces of music that we could incorporate into the concert to make it really personal. A mixture of two or three musicians will facilitate a concert in the hospice of around 30 minutes of appropriate music. Music that's soothing, relaxing, comforting and familiar. Musicians may perform to a particular ward, communal areas of the hospice or to the entire hospice in general. Musicians would introduce themselves, where they're from and their songs in a way appropriate to the setting they find themselves in. Musicians would perform to the audience, engaging as they see fit. If someone is asleep, noticeably confused or non-verbal, they may choose to just perform the song. Or if that person is more alert, they may decide to interact or hold the person's hand. At the end of the concert, the musicians would thank patients and staff for their time, pack up and leave quietly. Musicians would then have a debrief, talking about their experiences, what was good, what we could improve on, and a general well-being check-in post-concert as it can be quite an emotionally draining and difficult experience. I should mention a word on COVID-19. All concerts would be COVID secure. Musicians would be an appropriate distance apart from patients. Non-singing and non-wind instrumental players would be masked at all times. Instruments and surfaces would be disinfected before and after use and screens could be put in place if appropriate. If in-person performances aren't possible, we could look at recording virtual concerts which we would send to hospices to enjoy. So where will the project happen? Well, there are two reasonable options I can see. We could either focus on hospices in London or hospices in Wales or a mixture of both. Two locations where I have connections and bases to travel from. I've already collated a list of all the hospices in London and Wales, both adult and children, and have contacted each one in turn. Those that I've heard back from have all welcomed the proposal, expressing interest in being involved and how much they feel music helps their patients and their families. Now, the project is flexible uh, in its time frame and when it will happen. In truth, it's whenever is most appropriate according to each hospice. Maybe the weekends would be better, where more families would be able to gather together. But certainly these concerts would ha have to happen earlier in the day before patients settle down for an evening meal or before they feel too tired. So how long will the project last for? Well, the project is also flexible in its duration, although I firmly believe that this could be an extremely beneficial addition to the music outreach scene and would love, with support, to really establish this as the foremost organisation for music in palliative care settings. Well, the main prep work and logistics will be organising which hospices to go to. This will include phone calls with hospice staff to discuss whether they would like live music, and from there, agree into a date and time with the hospice staff in advance. My initial thoughts were that we could go to one hospice in the morning and one in the afternoon. The main prep work with the musicians would then be deciding which musicians to use, collating their availability and then arranging rehearsals and organising transport. So what resources and support will I need? Well, initially, I think I would need support from maybe Julian to discuss whether there's anything that I've overlooked or anything I need to consider before the project gets underway. Also, a thing to consider is that whilst I've experienced hospice environments firsthand, other musicians may not. So it might be a good idea to get some training sessions from musicians familiar with these sorts of uh, um, situations and environments to really help musicians feel comfortable in delivering a performance. So how will we communicate our experiences, findings and learnings more widely? Well, I thought a great deal about how we do this. And I think a really simple way would be to set up a website and social media to broadcast our work. I've already set up the social media accounts and the website is under construction. 
and it could include blog posts on specific concert experiences, the effect the concerts have had on patients, or simply raising aware of the positive work hospices carry out on a daily basis. Personally, I think a video of demystifying hospices and answering candid questions about what hospices are really like would go a long way. On a bigger scale, the most effective way to communicate our experience would seem to be through a seminar or conference. There are many hospice and palli palliative care associations and organisations, including Hospice Care UK, the Association for Palliative Medicine, International Association for Hospice and Palliative Care, the European Association for Palliative Care and the Worldwide Hospice Palliative Care Alliance. All of these organisations run masterclasses and seminars where you can meet other hospice and palliative care professionals, sharing your own knowledge and experience. This would be the perfect opportunity to feedback the effects the concerts have had on patients and work to grow music in hospices from a simple idea into something much bigger. So what have I done to ensure this project is a success? Well, I've started networking and forming connections with musicians interested in this type of outreach work to really give us a broad range of music and ensembles at our disposal. I've also collated a list of every hospice in London and Wales and got in touch with each one to outline my idea for the project and the rationale behind it. Each one that has got back to me has positively indicated that they would like to be part of the project. Finally, I've set up social media accounts and I'm in the process of making a website that could display the work of music in hospices more widely. So I couldn't think of a more apt way to end this video than by sharing where this initial idea stemmed from, why I'm so passionate about this project and why I think it can make a real difference to hospices around the country. To show how seriously I want this project to su succeed, I am sharing my own deeply personal video of me playing for my own mother at T. Alwyn Hospice in Swansea. Whilst the video itself is very calm and peaceful and doesn't include any distress in sounds or imagery, it may still be distressing to some people. Thank you for your consideration for my project.